Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at finding inverse functions of linear, quadratic, ra rational, and square root functions. In our first example, we have a few things we need to do. First, we're going to find the inverse function of the given function. Then we're going to verify that uh, when we do the composite functions of f of f inverse of x and of f inverse of f of x, they both equal x. We're going to state the domain and range for each function. And lastly, we're going to graph both functions and the line of symmetry in the same coordinate plane. Okay, so first thing, we need to find the inverse function. How do we do that? We're going to replace f of x with y. So we're just going to rewrite this as y equals 2x minus 4. Now we haven't actually done anything yet, that's still the same function. Now to find the inverse function, we're going to switch x and y. So we would have x equals 2y minus 4. And then what we want to do is we want to get the inverse written in function form as well so that we can write it as f inverse of x the same way we wrote the original function as f of x. So what does that mean? We need to get y by itself. Let's add 4 to both sides. Now we have x plus 4 is equal to 2y. And last thing, we'll need to divide all three terms by 2. Now when I rewrite my the next thing, I'm going to use the commutative property of equality. Um, to put y on the left and the, the other terms on the right. So we have y equals 1 half times x plus 4 over 2 is 2. And last step, I'm going to just write it in function form. So f inverse, it's like f to the negative 1. That's right, f inverse of x is equal to 1 half x plus 2. Okay, so the first part's done. Next, we want to verify the comp com composite functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at f of f inverse of x and make sure that it really does equal x. So this would be f of f inverse which is 1 half times x plus 2. And then what I'm going to do is anywhere in the function f that I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 1 half x plus 2. So that would give me 2, there's the x, so I'm going to replace it with 1 half x plus 2 minus 4. Distribute the 2, so 2 times a half is 1. 1 times x is x, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 4, I'm writing plus 4, plus 4, plus 4 minus 4, the 4s would cancel, we would get x. So this ends up working. Okay, how about the other direction? We also should show that f inverse of f of x is equal to x as well. So this would be f inverse of 2x minus 4. So in the inverse function, anywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 2x minus 4. That's going to give me, so over here, that's going to give me 1 half, there's my x, 2x minus 4 plus 2. Half I'm going to distribute, half of 2 is 1, 1 times x is x. Um, distributing the half to the minus 4, that's going to give me minus 2 plus 2. The 2's are going to cancel, we're going to be left with x, so that worked. Okay, next we're going to look at the domain and range of each function. So the given function is a linear equation, and actually it's inverse function is also a linear equation. And linear equations, the domains will be all real numbers and their ranges will be all real numbers. So we're going to say domain of f is from negative infinity to infinity. Uh, range of f is also from negative infinity to infinity. And we can just say, I'm going to say d of f inverse is from negative infinity to infinity, and the range of f inverse is from negative infinity to infinity. No restrictions on our linear equations. Okay, last step, we need to graph both of these and look at, for that symmetry about the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry for inverses is y equals x. So y equals, or f of x equals 2x minus 4, that's a linear equation. One point on it is the y-intercept at negative 4. Then we can use the slope to find more points. So the slope is 2 or 2 over 1. That would be up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And what's usually nice is to have a straight edge available. I don't have a straight edge for this, so I'm going to do the best that I can. Oh, I missed it totally. Let me try again. Attempt number 2. That was better. Okay, so that, and I'm going to label it. That's line f or function f. Now my inverse function, um, let's see, I'm going to start it. 0, 2, the y-intercept. I'm going to use the slope to go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, and then I might go down 1 into the left 2, and so that line kind of looks like that. 
I preemptively drew the line of symmetry, so this is y equals x, and this is f inverse. And so you can see, if we were to fold the graph, oops, sorry, if we were to fold the graph over that line, y equals x, that those two would line up. And if you use a straight edge, it would be even more abundantly clear than the graph on the, my computer screen. Okay, in our next example, we are given f of x equals x squared minus 2. And you'll notice here that we have this 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. That's defining the range for us. And the reason it's doing that is because this is a quadratic function, and quadratic functions don't have inverse functions in their entirety. Um, they fail the horizontal line test, so they don't themselves have inverse functions. But we can look at pieces of the parabolas, and that's okay as long as it passes the horizontal line test, which with these with this restricted domain, it will. So looking here, it says state the domain and range. We already know the domain of f, and the domain of f is going to be from 0 to 3. And why is that? Because that's what was given to us. OK, but we want to find the inverse function. So the first thing we need to do, we're going to rewrite f of x as y. So we have y equals x squared minus 2. Now to write the inverse, we're going to switch x and y. So we're going to say x equals y squared minus 2. And now we want to get y by itself. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. That's going to give me x plus 2 is equal to y squared. Now to get y by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And we're going to say y equals the positive or negative square root of x plus 2. And now we're actually going to kind of ignore that plus or minus um, because we are talking about a piece of the function. We're going to cut this and we're just going to restrict the domain of this function. Um, let's go totally back into function form. This can be f of negative uh, f inverse of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2. Okay, great. How are we going to figure out the domain for this? Well, remember, the domain of the inverse function is the range of the given function. So if we know what the range is, we can figure out what the domain of the inverse is. So what's the range of f? Well, we can plug in 0 and we can plug in 3, and we know that those have to be the biggest and smallest points because it passes the horizontal line test. So when I do that, if I plug in 0, f of 0 would be 0 squared minus 2, which is 2, negative 2. And if I plug in 3, I get 3 squared minus 2. That's 9 minus 2, which is 7. So now I also know the range. The range of my original function, f, is going to be from negative 2 to 7. Well, if I switch those, that's going to give me the uh, domain and range of the inverse function. So the domain of f inverse, remember that's going to be the same as the range of f. So this is going to be, that one in there, there we go, negative 2 to 7. And the range of f inverse is going to be the domain of f, so it's going to be from 0 to 3. And what we can do is we can go ahead and graph F. Nope, sorry, just kidding, we need to verify. So let's verify that this actually does work. So this is going to be f inverse of f, which is x squared minus 2. And then this would be, if I plug in x, uh, x squared minus 2 anywhere in the inverse function that I see in x, that's going to give me the square root of x squared minus 2 plus 2. So the minus 2 and plus 2 cancel, we end up with the square root of x squared. and Technically, this should be the absolute value of x, um, but because we have those restrictions, we kind of get to like overlook that a little bit. So, oops, thank you. All right, and now we're going to graph these functions. So I'm going to graph, actually, I found two points, right, because I plugged in 0 and I plugged in 3 to my original function. That tells me two ordered pairs. So one is 0, negative 2 down here, and one is 3, 7. 3, 7 is right here. And I know that this is a piece of a parabola, so I'm going to make this a nice curve as best I can. That should be a curve. Um, now the other thing I know, so this is f, and I want to be really clear here, this is the endpoints. These are the endpoints. So that, that is the entire graph of f. Now for f inverse, I can just use the switch the x, y of those ordered pairs, and that's going to tell me f inverse. So I graphed 0, negative 2. That means that negative 2, 0 is on the graph of f inverse. Also on f was 3, 7, which means 7, 3 is on f inverse. And now again, it's going to be a smooth curve. Ooh, that one was way better. And there's my inverse. 
and we want to look at the line of symmetry. So you can see if I did a better job of nice curves that that would totally, totally work and be symmetric about that line, y equals x. Okay, in our next example, we are going to find the inverse function of the given function h, and then we're going to compare the graphs. We're not actually going to graph them. I have them already graphed for us because they are very similar looking, but we can just see that they are symmetric about the line of symmetry. All right, so what do we do first here? We replace h of x with y. So we're going to say y equals x minus 2 over x plus 3. Next, we're going to switch x and y. When we switch x and y, that is the inverse. So now we're going to say x equals y minus 2 over y plus 3. And now what do we have to do? We have to get y by itself. This is going to be a little tricky because there's not one y, but two. So what do we do? Well, we can't have a y in the numerator and a y in the denominator. We're going to have to get y out of the denominator, so we need to multiply the entire equation or multiply both sides by the denominator, y plus 3. So this is going to give me x times y plus 3. Over here, they'll cancel out, and we'll be left with y minus 2. Now we need to distribute x, so I'm going to have xy plus 3x is equal to y minus 2. And now what we want to do is we want to get all the y's together on one side of the equation and everything else on the other side of the equation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave xy where it is, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So that's moving everything that doesn't have a y to the right hand side, I need to move this y to the left hand side by subtracting y from both sides. So now I have xy minus y equals what I have, negative 2 minus 3x. So now what I'm going to do, I have two terms with y. I don't want two terms with y, I just want one single y. We're going to factor out the y. So that's going to give me y, and then what's left when I factor it out? x minus 1. Now, whew, finally I have one single y. It's not by itself yet, it's being multiplied by something. So to undo that, I'll divide both sides by that thing. I'm going to divide both sides by x minus 1, and I have y equals negative 2 minus 3x over x minus 1. <sighs> Final step, go into function form. f inverse of x is equal, oh, sorry, h inverse of x is equal to negative 2 minus 3x over x minus 1. That was a lot of work. And there are the graphs. So we see one graph is in red, one graph is in green, and the orange, this is y equals x. So you can see if you were to fold the graphs over that line of symmetry, y equals x, that they would absolutely meet and, and fold in place, and, and we can see that they're inverses based on the graph. Okay, last example. We want to find the inverse of the function, and then we want to state the domain and range for each function. First step. We want to rewrite this as y. y equals the square root of x plus 4. Now we're going to start the inverse function. So we're going to switch x and y. We're going to say x equals the square root of y plus 4. Now, y is stuck under a radical. How do we get it out of the radical? Square both sides. So we're going to square the left-hand side. Actually, that's the right-hand side. And square the left-hand side. We get x squared equals y plus 4. Now to get y by itself, we'll subtract 4 from both sides and we get y equals x squared minus 4. Right? Good? So far so good? Okay. We're going to go and write this in function form. f inverse of x, so good it is f, is equal to x squared minus 4. Now here comes the tricky part. We need to state the domain and range of each function. Let's start with our given function. So the given function f has restrictions on the domain because we have square root which means that x plus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So this tells us that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. So that's good. That tells us the domain of f is going to be from negative 4 to infinity. And what else does that tell us? If we know the domain is from negative 4 to infinity of f, that is the say it with me, the range of f inverse. So down here I can say range of f inverse is negative 4 to infinity. And this is a bracket, it looks a little bit there. Okay, now what's the range of f? Well, if we plug in negative 4, what's that going to 
give us? If we plug in negative 4 here, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. So it's going to be a minimum of 0 up to however big. So this is going to be 0 to infinity, which means what does that tell us about f inverse? It tells us the domain of f inverse is going to be, whoops, not a parenthesis, bracket, bracket. We get to include these endpoints, 0 to infinity. These are a lot of different intricacies about inverse functions. Thank you for stopping by.